This is a 9 millimeter bullet from a handgun, which we captured in slow motion. The handgun bullet traveled about 800 miles an hour. It sliced nearly straight all the way through the gel. This one's going to be a little bit louder. Now, look at the AR-15 round. Mm. See the difference? Yes. <laughs> it's three times faster and struck with more than twice the force. The shockwave of the AR-15 bullet blasted a large cavity in the gel, unlike the bullet from the handgun. A powerful and much-needed reminder of how lethal AR-style rifles are. As experts tell the Houston Chronicle, these particular weapons, like the one used in Uvalde, often leave victims unrecognizable. You need to hear this. With us tonight, Dr. Vin Gupta, a critical care pulmonologist in Seattle and a reservist serving in the U.S. Air Force Medical Corps. Vin, I, I know this is the last thing you want to talk about, but I need you to explain to our audience while we're talking all about gun safety, there's nothing safe about an AR-15. Walk us through what happens to a human body, a child, when a bullet from an AR-15 style enters you. Well, good evening, Stephanie, and, and and for your audience here, not to get too graphic, but uh, if if you are if you know somebody or let's say somebody gets shot by uh, an AR-15 style weapon and that bullet goes in through an entry wound, what happens on impact to the to that flesh, that soft tissue between your skin and say bone? It's like a mini bomb went off, Stephanie. And so what you'll have is you'll have tissue destruction, you'll have somebody bleeding out, likely uh, uh, damage to arteries and veins. In, in battlefield medicine, where we get taught uh, in, in military medicine that one of the core components here is tactical combat casualty care. You have put a tourniquet on as high as possible to stanch that bleeding, to try to save a life. Uh, and, and, and then you start talking not in heart rate, respiratory rate, temperature, these normal vital signs that you and I are well aware of two years into the COVID pandemic. We're talking about things like shock index, heart rate divided by your systolic blood pressure. We don't, I mean, that's not common parlance in civilian medicine. We're talking about things like shock index because we're wondering how much blood volume has been lost if somebody has incurred this type of injury. In, in settings like this, you lose 40 to 50% of your blood volume within minutes. So this can happen really quickly. There's organ failure, there's an inflammatory cascade, much more detrimental to the body than an injury or a bullet uh, that might go into the body from a handgun, Stephanie. So that's why time is of the essence, but also a different skill set, battlefield medicine, not civilian medicine. So, so does your average hospital, let's say someone actually makes it into an ambulance, into an emergency room, can an average hospital, can they even treat someone? Absolutely, but time is of the essence here. The, the, the concern here is, would you, are you gonna hemorrhage to death? How much blood volume will you lose? Depends on where that injury occurred. Was it in a limb? Can they amputate that limb? Again, is a tourniquet in place? Can they stanch out that bleeding? EMTs, civilian EMTs, generally are taught in these uh, in what to do in these situations. But Stephanie, they just don't have enough opportunity to flex this type of skill set because it's not that common. These types of injuries across the United States at, at a massacre-like level. This is battlefield medicine. But yes, if this were to happen quickly and the, and the patient was was stabilized in the field right after that injury, literally within a minute or two. We're not talking one hour, within a minute or two. If the injury was recognized, a tourniquet was placed. Yes, then you take that person to a hospital, you get them blood products, you do damage control, resuscitation, a type of immediate uh, emergent but surgery from a trauma surgeon to truly stanch out that bleeding. We're out of time, but I have to ask, why can some of these children not be identified? They, there's not rubble they're under, they're not missing, they're right there in the classroom. Well, they likely sustained, I'm speculating here, but they probably likely has sustained facial trauma bullets to, to, to their face. And, and, and again, in this case, once you have that impact, you have soft tissue destruction, you probably have a face that's unrecognizable. As hard as it is to articulate that, as hard as it is for your audience to hear that. So that's the reason why. Unrecognizable unrecognizable. That is the work of an AR-15, a weapon of war. Dr. Vin Gupta, thank you for joining us tonight.